I love this fry system, but I can't see what I'm doing unless I squeeze my head directly above the trays. I didn't take into account the need for daily maintenance, and because of that, water quality is not optimal. In my previous video of the system, Master Breeder Dean even commented saying he would move the system too. So today I'm going to build a new rack just for this tank. I'll make it the perfect height so that maintenance is easy and therefore it gets done more often. Let's get started. After looking around the fish room, I think I found the perfect spot for my new fry rack. At least this will be a temporary spot until I build my permanent fish room. By the way, thank you guys so much for the support. It really means a lot to me. I'm saving up all the money I generate from this hobby to build my dream fish room and I can't wait to share that with you in the future. Okay, back to the build. I'm following basic plans from the King of DIY, a video he had about 8 years ago. Oldie but a goodie. This is a really simple aquarium rack you could make yourself with just a couple basic tools. This is where I messed up. I didn't account for the inch and a half thickness of each 2x4 on the width side, so my aquarium rack is about 3 inches too wide. That's okay though, I'm not very worried about it. Overall this rack took about 20 minutes to make and costed about $25. Now that the base is complete, we're going to put some legs on it. I made them 2 feet in length so that I could be in a really comfortable position when I did my maintenance every day. Make sure you do this part on a flat surface that's nice and level and put four heavy duty construction screws in each piece. My intention here is not to really show you how to make this. If you want to know that, I'll link Joey's video in the description. Now that we have our legs secured, we're going to put a supporting 2x4 underneath the base on both sides and go ahead and throw four more screws in each connection point. And that's pretty much it, we're all done. Don't worry if the legs aren't perfect, we can shim those up later. This location is perfect because I can use the wall to mount other hardware I'm going to need for this build. Fits like a glove. I decided to mount all the hardware about 4 inches above the tank. I cut a 2x4 the same length of the stand with a couple horizontal sections. This will allow me to mount my two pieces of PVC above it without blocking the view of the trays too much. If you've never mounted anything to concrete, it's actually not that big of a deal. You just need a hammer drill, some tapcom screws, and a masonry drill bit. Don't tell my wife I did this. Next we'll anchor the 2x4 with some Tapcom screws. I'm using two of them which should be more than enough. Oh yeah, that's not going anywhere. I'm liking it so far. I guess perfect will have to do. Now I'll just drain the tank so I can move it over. I actually had all four trays full of CPDs and I released a couple trays just to free up some room so that I could start breeding some more stuff. This is when I realized I messed up. The tank looks really good from the front, but if you look at it from the back you'll notice I've got about 3 inches back there. I was playing with my daughter while I drew this diagram, so I made a pretty big mistake, but that's not a big deal. I just put a 2x4 in the center and that should hold the weight no problem. The important thing is that the four corners are supported usually too lazy to do this, but I actually shimmed it to make it perfectly level. This took about two minutes and it was totally worth it. Next I started playing around with how I wanted to mount the PVC pipes. It worked best to run them opposite of the way they were designed, so all the valves were on the back end. I could probably turn these in the future, but for now I didn't want to worry about it. By the way, there will be links for all of the items I used to build this fry system in the description if you want to check those out. And if you want to watch the original video on how to build this fry system, just become a member of the Aquarium Co-op channel and you'll see Dean giving a really good tutorial on how to build these boxes. I really do believe this is the best fry system available right now. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Next I just mounted a cheap floodlight from Home Depot. I think this costed me about 15 bucks. Next I dropped my new pump in. You might notice this is a different one from the previous video. That prehistoric one died. This one will be in the description as well, I'm really liking it so far. 
Then after that, I just dropped in the sponge filter and a 100 watt heater from Eheim. If anyone's curious, I keep my system at about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me know in the comments what you keep yours at. I also dropped a hang on the back filter on the side just to help deal with some more floating debris. It's looking really good. I'm really happy with it so far. I think now it's time to fill it up. After that, I added an extra valve so that I could use the existing valve for the sponge filter. Thanks to my loop system, I was able to just tap into the air right above it. I'll have to talk about this in another video. Then I started replacing the black airline tubing for the water lines as well as the airlines. I use Aquarium Co-op black airline tubing because it's so soft and easy to work with. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but for how often you're actually using this stuff, it's really nice to have soft and pliable tubing. I gotta say, having the fry system here is a game changer. I never thought I would be able to do water changes or maintenance while sitting down. Finally, I could actually see what I'm doing. I can see all the fry, I can manage their health, and I can get all that detritus and uneaten food off the bottom without having to squeeze my big old head in between the two by fours. Before I would end up with fry in the bucket almost every time and I hate doing that to the fish because I know it stresses them out. This time I didn't suck up one fry and I was able to see exactly what I was doing and I was comfortable which tells me I'm going to be doing maintenance a lot more often. You should know the number one priority on my list is the health of the fish. I believe I have a responsibility to these animals and I really care deeply about them. So this is going to allow me to take much better care of my fishy friends. Seriously though, I couldn't be happier with this system. If you're thinking about building something like this, I strongly encourage it. It really wasn't that hard and although I consider myself fairly handy, I think anyone could do this. Honestly, I really do. And I know I already said thank you, but I want to say it again. Almost 2,500 subscribers. I can't believe it. You guys are awesome and I really love making content for you. So keep the love coming please and I will be working on our next giveaway so stay tuned for that. The only question I have left for you guys is what should I put in these next three tanks? Let me know down in the comments. And until then I'll see you next time. Have a good week everyone.